Sometimes my thoughts race so fast, I can't concentrate on anything. I heard my first voice in, in my junior year of high school. What I thought I was going to do, be the gentleman farmer, I find now I can't do. I find myself so depressed that I can't go outside and dig or hoe or anything like that. For weeks, I couldn't get off the couch. My daughter um, saw some things in me that I didn't want, I don't want her to, to know, but she needs to about my illness. I feel blue for long periods of time and and uh, just never really sure if, uh, I wonder if other people feel like this, if this is just me, you know. More than 50,000 San Luis Obispo County residents may struggle with depression, bipolar disorder, and schizophrenia. Many of them live in the dark. While leading seemingly normal lives, they are often alone and isolated, separated or feeling separated from families, from friends, from treatment, from hope. Fear of judgment, job loss, broken friendships, and social stigma propel them deeper into darkness. Mental illness is a disease that is as treatable as diabetes or high blood pressure. Unlike diabetes, feelings of personal shame and social stigma often accompany mental illness. A disease of loneliness, people with mental illnesses don't suffer alone. Families, friends, and coworkers also feel the strain. There is hope for people with mental illnesses, hope that leads to light. You know, the truth is I, I... I don't let a lot of people know. I don't let a lot of people know because it's not, uh, it's not something I'm used to doing. I have several colleagues at work who, um, who I let in, who I talk to, to about my depression. And uh, turns out that when you, when I, I discover that when I talk to people about it, they are willing to open up about their own uh, struggles in life. And, and uh, I found out since I was willing to talk with people that there's a lot more folks out there in the community that um, that suffer with depression than I thought than I ever thought. I think when people hear the word bipolar, I think a lot of people go immediately to someone who may be homeless and rambling to themselves in the park, or you know, someone who is jumping off buildings or doing something very, very extreme. And what I think people don't realize is there's a big uh, spectrum of what bipolar means, or what depression means, or what any mental illness is. You know, the, the, the illness I have is a constant um, discomfort of being imbalanced. The left side of my brain is imbalanced from my right side brain. And it's not drugs like some people may think, because I really haven't, you know, I'd be dead by now if I, if I did street drugs. I've been depressed uh, off and on for all of my working life. I work in the motion picture business and when I was out of work for more than a m month or two I would begin to slowly slide into depression thinking that I'm never going to work again. I think I can remember first feeling depressed around 13 or 14 years old. I couldn't really determine whether that was how I was supposed to feel when I was 13 or 14 like everyone else or if that was something special about me. My uh, sophomore year in college, my father was diagnosed with severe depression, and um, it kind of made me think about how I'd been feeling recently, and I was um, very, very down, but also very, very up sometimes, and I just kind of started to get the feeling that it might not be normal emotions, how other people felt emotions. Uh, in my business, they don't throw a party and give you a gold watch. They just don't call you anymore. So I figured uh, after a certain period of time, as years go by, um, that uh, I'm not going to work anymore. And then at a certain point, my mother-in-law died. She was 96 years old. She certainly had a full life. But, but suddenly something combined, the idea of my not working and her dying, made me suddenly think that that's the only thing left for me to do is to die. 
the uh, transition between my 11th grade and 12th grade um, was like hell. It was like purgatory. I couldn't step out the front door. A lot of isolation, uh, apathy, where, where I would just hibernate and just go into my room and just want to sleep. You know, I would watch and I would see how people would react to the same kinds of things that I would see, and they would laugh, and, and I didn't find them funny or amusing, and they would express joy and, and uh, really enthusiasm for what was going on for them, and, and I, um, I couldn't manufacture those feelings. They just didn't come, and it occurred to me after a while that, that, um, that I was very different, very different in the way I, I responded to normal things in life. Let's see, when I was down, it was more than just feeling bad for a week, even feeling bad for a month. It was just this feeling of complete despair, like it would never get better. And it would be over things that were so minor. It was kind of the same when I would have um, a manic episode or an upswing. I would get so anxious and worked up, I could talk for hours and never stop. I usually talk a lot anyway, but this was a lot different. It was more like every single thought in my mind was just kind of coming out of my mouth and no rhyme or reason to what it was. Um, my heart would beat really fast. I'd feel, I'd be very fidgety. I just could not formulate one full thought in my mind. It was like 5,000 things going on all at one time. I was in and out of the hospital uh, learning about getting over denial uh, about my mental illness and just dealing with it on a daily basis. I remember waking up one morning and uh, going out and telling, saying to my wife, uh, nothing matters. Just feels to me like nothing matters. I don't care about anything. I think the first time I, I really looked in earnest for some help with my depression um, was right after um, Right after my first wife left, I, um, she left in the middle of the night, took my son with her. He was not quite a year old. And when the family fell apart, I fell apart. I was in the, in the state hospital. I had been picked up by the police and put in the back of a paddy wagon with handcuffs. And I was 109 pounds. And I was handcuffed because I had a, a mood swing. My husband and I, at the time, um, were living in D.C., and he was great. I was on the couch every weekend. I, I, you know, I could barely get up and go to work, and I would just come home and sit on the couch. And for a couple months, he did that. He sat on the couch with me and, you know, just stayed home and took care of me. And then, you know, the, the actual turning moment for me was one night he was like, okay, I'm going out with our friends tonight. And, you know, I was just laying on the couch crying. I'm like, well, aren't you going to stay home with me? And he's like, it's fine if you stay at home. He said, but, you know, I need to go out and I need to live my life too. And that was the turning point for me in my mind. I thought, oh my gosh, I could lose this amazing person that's come into my life just because I won't go and deal with my own emotions. And, you know, that's kind of what sent me to go into treatment that time when I realized that what I was feeling and how I was acting was really affecting other people and not just myself. Um, so I went to a counselor and um, the, first, the first one I can remember going to at about age 27. And uh, he was a, a psychiatrist. And um, that's when I first talked about it and, and uh, got some help. You see, when I retired, my whole identity went away. My whole life went away. I don't have my, I identified myself for 50 years as a film editor and now I have no identity anymore. I'm just me. <laughs> and so she, she led me through the stages of understanding that my identity was not necessarily what I did. It was who I was. The advice I would give to someone who was feeling those same feelings of depression and anxiety and mania that I felt in the past is to just really listen to yourself. Uh, you know yourself better than anyone else knows you. If um, you're feeling off, if you're feeling like your emotions might not be normal and it's starting to affect your quality of life, then 
I would go talk to someone. You may not mean medication, but you may, and that might be the thing that just makes your life better. So it takes me a couple of hours of meditation, which is also very helpful. I meditate, uh, and uh, just calming myself down, uh, which the pills help, uh, and, and finding something to do, getting involved, keeping myself busy. That's the, that's the key. She said to me, she said, she was like four or five. I was taking a shower with her and she says, Mommy, I want to be just like you. I don't want to, your, I don't want your mental illness. I don't want to become mentally ill, but I want to be like you. And I thought that was so sweet. The inner connection, you know, if you can connect with your daughter, it's your child, it's, and only have one. <laughs> The documentary that I took on also helps as treatment. It was, uh, but I'm working with a couple of people and I'm doing something that I know I know how to do. It's funny to think of an activity as treatment, but it really is. It, uh, the more I'm with people, the better I feel. What brings happiness to me today is waking up and finding people there. I didn't chase everybody away. <laughs> And, um, you know, I quit drinking 10 years ago, so I have sobriety, and it's just to see the sunshine every day and, you know, not, not quitting on myself and just getting involved in activities outside the house and just kind of smell the roses. And <laughs> I had no idea that um, I'd feel as good as I do today. I, I uh, no idea at all. I enjoy doing ordinary things going to work and interacting with my family and my friends and I love to ride my motorcycle. Uh, I've been a motorcycle rider most of my adult life and now just uh, a mellow ride through the canyon. It's an extraordinary feeling but it's really a, a very ordinary thing to do so life is good today. It's very good. Yeah. With help comes hope. The help of loved ones. Colleagues and the many treatment and support services available in San Luis Obispo County make a difference. Help sheds light on the truth that you don't just snap out of it. That a friend can make a difference. That nobody has to suffer or be alone. That having a mental illness is not a life sentence. That people with mental illnesses can live the lives they imagine. For more information on how to get help or help someone, visit slowthestigma.org or call 800-549-4499.